Okay, so full disclosure, today I just came back from a three-day camping trip, and it's not a glamping trip, like I finally got to shower today, and on my first day there I did get a bug bite, right here, it's a bug bite. I don't love that for me, I also have like seven million bug bites <laughs> on the rest of me. But I'm shower, I'm clean, life's kind of together, and unbeknownst to me, Evie planned my next video. I was probably just gonna punt this to Tuesday, but instead I think you guys are getting a Monday video, and you're getting a very rare book haul and an unboxing on this channel. <laughs> because Evie sent me uh, two boxes worth of books, if you didn't tell from the thumbnail. I don't know what's in those boxes. I don't know. I know there was a sale on a bookstore website that was essentially, what, buy two, get one free or something, and Evie is one of the only people who knows my address. And I have maybe small regrets. Sm I, these are full bookshelves, Evie. These are full bookshelves. Also, side note. Um, Ryan keeps buying me shirts, and I'm loving them. Um, and this is a shirt. Let's see if I can show you guys for my favorite roller coaster, Millennium Force. Oh, it's so good. Anyways, um, it's really great. I really like it. A really soft material, and I really like that roller coaster. So first I'm going to show you some books that I have hauled recently because I, I wanted to, <laughs> and uh, also a gift from a different booktube friend, and then we'll get into the boxes. So first, um, recently I did the book club with Erin at Booked and Busy on the Earthseed duology by Octavia Butler, and she did not like them, and so she was going to unhaul the books. I'm like, we'll send them my way. So now I actually own some nice Octavia Butler. I used to own Kindred, and I don't know where that copy went. It vanished into the ether. I gave it to my mom, and then I could never find it again, but my mom read it. So there's that. So we got Parable of the Sower, and then we got Parable of the Talents. And I, you know, I read them both ebooks e e or audio, so I never knew how long they were, but Parable of the Talents is like kind of significantly longer than Parable of the Sower. So happy to have some nice editions of Butler books for my shelf. I also recently went to my bookstore with one of my close friends because she was in town and whenever I have people in town, we have to go to the Brookline Booksmith. And I did have my eye on one book and like two of these you've already seen in a TBR. Um, so I went primarily to get Just Like Home, which I now have. And I have not read yet, but when you're seeing this, it's the start of the month and maybe I pick it up. Maybe I pick up a different book on my TBR, but I'm very excited. Um, and then I basically picked up a bunch of new releases that I wasn't sure about. <laughs> like, I think I picked up Juniper and Thorn, um, The Final Strife, um, and then the one I chose, and I, like, read a bit of each of them to see which one I was maybe more near future in the mood for. Um, cause, and I decided Juniper and Thor would probably be better for fall. And that Final Strife, I just finished the Blood Trials, and I needed to give myself some, like, resistance fantasy sci-fi distance. Um, so I ended up getting The Stardust Thief. And I'm really excited. I really like the quality of this book product, and I thought the writing style would get on well with me. And I, it just feels like it's going to be a fun summer adventure quest read, and I'm still currently in summer. So if I could squeeze it in in August, that'd be great. I probably would like it any time of year anyways, but this is what caught my eye. And then I went to the used bookseller, and they actually had a book that was first put on my radar when I first joined BookTube in 2020 at um, Quarantine Pages, and that is the short story collection. Um, Friday Black. And this was in the used bookstore seller for like $8 for this like short story collection. It's like, I think, what's it called? A French print flap. And oh, that's pretty. That's pretty pretty. And like, it's in really good condition. And so I got it. Like, look at these. This is so nice. So yeah, it, it's been one of those short story collections. It's not speculative, I don't think. I think this is more literary general fiction. But I wanted it. And so I got it. Now, I don't know what's in these boxes. So let, let's find out. Oh my. Okay. All right. All right. <sighs> Evie, is this you saying you want to buddy read books by an author? Are you running out of Stephen Graham Jones and you're just picking me after Leslie? If you don't know, Evie and Leslie alternate between reading Stephen Graham Jones and Zolnir Hurston. And I'm based off this box. Maybe she's trying to make me read a bunch of Louise Erdrich. What the, the fuck? Evie. Okay. I think these are all Louise Erdrich in this box. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I think so. We'll go through them all in a second. I'm just trying to check and make sure I'm not... <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Ten. Nine. These are all by one author. It is my favorite literary fiction author. I already own two books by her I haven't finished or started, but we have The Bingo Palace. We have 
The Beat Queen. I don't know anything about these books other than they're by Louise Archer, by the way. Um, books and Islands. Love Medicine. I have heard this. I think this might be the start of a series question. Four Souls. Tracks. My bet is these are related to each other based off the cover. Unsure. Shadow Tag. I like this cover. I really like this. That makes me happy. Antelope Woman. And The Master Butcher's Singing Club. Yeah. Um, this is one of those authors that has like such a large backlist. Like for context. And I think Evie just bought me half of it. So <laughs> we'll find out. I'm trying to see if I can gain anything from this. Love Medicine, I think, is the first one published. So that's probably where I should go next, huh? Because that, well, I make the assumption when I read these lists that the first one is the first one published. So yeah. Wow. Yeah, she bought me a bunch of these. Oh, wait. Well, I guess let's see what's in the next box. If it's more Louise Erdrich, I, we better hope I keep liking her. I mean, she's three for three for me, but still, dang. I'm about to own more of her than Jemison. Okay, this does not seem to be more Louise Erdrich, so let's see. <gasps> this one I'm excited about. So Evie found this book, It Would Be Night in Caracas, which is a translated work by a Venezuelan author. And I don't think it's speculative. I think this is literary or something like that. I don't even know. Um, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's historical, but I'm just like, I'm excited. I think it's translated? Um, I guess let me look at the front page. It might actually, because she was born and raised in Caracas. Yes, translated from the Spanish by Elizabeth Breyer. Okay, that's what I thought. I don't know what this is about. It's pretty short. And I just have wanted to always read a book by a Venezuelan author. And it's just really hard to find translated works that I'm remotely interested in. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what this is about. But I think this is a buddy read we have planned. And it's not that long. What else do we have in here? Ooh. The Rock Eaters, Brenda Pinata Stories. Interesting, interesting. What does it mean to be other? What does it mean to love in a world determined to keep us apart? There's a quote from Jeff Vandermeer. Let's see. <laughs> There's magic and portals and skulls. Um, who is this author? Do I know? Is this book going to tell me? Nope, nope, doesn't seem to. Just seems to be maybe a short story collection. Feels like it's a short story collection. All right, the Jeff Vandermeer quote is, a stunning debut collection compromised of provocative stories that are oddly healing and horizon expanding. An exciting new voice. So yeah, it's a really interesting cover. Uh, I can say that for sure. A dazzle with luring flights of fancy. These stories soar. So who knows? A genre blending socio-political commentary with prose that shine. Interesting, interesting. Ah, I have been told to read this by multiple people and this is a pretty nice copy of it. Um, Sabrina and Karina. Um, this actually was recommended to me. Oh, I'm forgetting the channel name right now, but it's a channel that I follow forever. I will link it in the description and point out that this book was recommended by this booktuber. Um, but it's been on my to-be-read list for a while. This is a really nice hardcover. Like, I mean, it's it's used, obviously, but it's not bad. And I can't remember why it was recommended to me, but it's, I think, a Latina author, and that was part of it. I think these are also short stories. I think these are also a short story collection, I believe. Yes. Yes, that's what it looks like. Sorry that I'm not more prepared for this. Blame, blame me, me that I just had to open in books from Denver, Colorado. So yeah, I don't think these are going to be speculative, but I'm down for it. And like this cover is pretty stunning. Oh, National Book Award long list. So some people thought it was pretty good. And now we have these books that like, I don't actually know what they are related to. Um, but they're all by Eden Robinson. And it feels like I should know who this is. Um, Cause it's, been made into like TV shows? Stuff like that? Okay, so this is obviously a trilogy, I think, based off the coloring and the same authorness of it all. So let's see if one of these books will tell me which one's first. Um, let's see. No, these are also by, so maybe this is the first one, Son of a Trickster. Um, a compelling coming of age novel in which everyday teen existence crashes up against indigenous beliefs, crazy family dynamics, and cannibalistic river otters. Okay, cool. That implies to me that this is Probably another indigenous author, which is awesome because I'm always looking for more of those. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yep. All right. <laughs> this book was written under the influence of pan fried tofu and nutritional yeast, which may explain things, but probably doesn't. That's really intriguing to me. <laughs> but yeah, it's now a major television series, Trickster on CBC. Okay. Um, so presumably these are the sequels for that. So I won't read too many more of that. 
but yeah, this has praise for Trickster Drift. Yeah. So this is, I think, the second one. This feels like it's probably the sequel. Let's see what we find. Yeah, we did it, guys. All right, one, two, and then three. And I won't read the backs of these two because I don't want to spoil this guy. But it's very pretty. I'm like down. Cannibalistic otters. Who knew? So Evie doing a great job of giving me a nice new stack of books, the majority of them, by indigenous authors. Well, granted, two indigenous authors. And then these three adding to my Latinx collection. I think, I think. I actually don't know much about Brenda Poinato. Maybe they're indigenous as well. I have no clue. Let's see. These questions. This is very intriguing to me. It's a very orange. Like This is incredibly neon and orange. So yeah, that was a surprising book haul. Sorry if my friends who are watching this, maybe they're not, I don't know. I had people cat sitting for me and I didn't know these were coming and I just get a picture for them carrying a bunch of packages up my stairs because they're nice friends. Like they could have left them in the lobby and they probably would have been fine. Maybe, who knows, but they were nice enough to bring them up. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I did not know there would be two boxes of books because I don't order books. I don't order books because Evie just sends them to me anyway. But I'm actually really excited. I'm gonna probably actually just have to do a Louise Erdrich project at this point. And I have been not prioritizing Plague of Doves and I've been wanting to, but now, now what do I do? Do I start publication order? If anyone out there who watches my channel loves Louise Erdrich and has recommendations, please let me know. Although I do know that most people who read speculative fiction don't tend to read her works, I don't think. <laughs> Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong about that. So that's this chaotic video post camping trip. And you know, camping trips, you always come back, you know, with a couple, couple of bug bites, couple bruises, maybe a little bit of sleep deprivation. Although I slept better than I ever have on this camping trip. We do it every year. So that was pretty great. Um, this week, I'm still planning on doing my recent release roundup on Wednesday. I know it's a little late. I have most of my notes put together, but I need to take a few more and that's going to take way more time to edit than this video. So that's going to be Wednesday and then Friday should be my wrap up and then we'll just keep going with more, more videos. But that's what I have planned for the week. Um, thank you, Evie, for planning this video for me. I just really, you would not have gotten a Monday video if these books hadn't shown up. It was not happening. <laughs> if you want to leave an emoji, um, I don't know. Leave an insect, because this cover is truly speaking to me. Like, I, we got, like, islands and a palm tree. We got this, like, insect thing. I don't know. I guess you could do rocks. There's a, there are a lot of options on this cover. So this is the inspiration for the emoji, if you just want to let me know you're here. Again, any Louise Erdrich opinions, any Eden Robinson knowledge, I know nothing about that author. Um, and otherwise, like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.